I tell you what, really, you just preached a sermon here about how you yielded to the Lord and brought reconciliation through love. And, um, and I'm not even going to preach a sermon that I had for you. I'm going to wait till next weekend. And I'm just going to build on what Renee came up and gave her testimony because that was a sermon to people. You know, what good does it do? And you're going to bless lives through that testimony. What That's good right. does it do if we say we're Christians and we don't act in love? Amen. Okay, come on now. Amen, Sam. Amen. I mean, Jesus said all people are going to know you're my disciples because you love one another. That's right. Sure, we're flawed. Sure, we're going to make mistakes. But let's That's get right. the mistake right. That's right. I don't know how many times I've told my mother, I said, Mom, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Amen. That's right. Has anybody in here never had to say they're sorry to someone? I've had a lot. Why? Because the only way that you and I can fix a wrong is by saying we're sorry, but I love you. That's right. Amen. If we're going to uh, walk with Jesus, you're going to be doing a lot of that in life. Amen. Amen. Because you're going to offend someone. That's right. And someone's going to offend you. That's right. Amen. Amen. Look with me, please, at Matthew chapter 22, verse 34. And I'm going to say this. A lot of people want to be in health. They want a healthy body. But one way that we maintain health is by keeping the commandment of love. That's right. Amen. And that's why that helped you. And I know we prayed for you and that earlier went down that three doctors was it three doctors or two two doctors said that she needed an operation and hands were laid upon her in the name of Jesus and uh, it began to shrink and then they said you didn't need the operation so you know God is an awesome God yes. I tell you what we, we walk in love but we walk in forgiveness and you're listen the devil knows how to get to some people that's right yeah that's right that's right and uh, I remember hearing about a lady. She had a child that had the worst seizures that the doctor said this was the worst that I've ever seen in a child. But her and her mother-in-law didn't get along. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the man of God was going over there that I heard say this, went over, was going over, to her house, and he normally didn't go because he didn't want to show partiality, and the Lord told him to go. And so, because they invited him over there to eat, and, and a lot of people invite him to their homes, and uh, and so if he went to all of them, or if he picked a, a certain few, well then, you know, you can become partial, so he just didn't go unless the Lord said go to none. Yeah, yeah. And so the Lord told him to go, to this, to this home because they invited him to come and eat. And this child of theirs had the worst seizures that, like the doctor said, it was the worst he's ever seen. But her and her mother-in-law didn't get along. And so while he was driving over there, he almost, well, I think he did look in the back seat. It seemed to him like it was audible. The Lord spoke to him and says, Say to the mother, Mother, I told Israel that if they keep my commandments and my statutes and walk in them, that I would take sickness out of the midst of them, and the number of their days I will fulfill. He said, paraphrasing that to the New Testament, a new commandment I give unto you, that you walk in love. That's right. Amen? Amen. He said, you tell her, if she'll keep my commandment of love and walk in my commandment of love, I'll take sickness out of the midst of her. He went over there and shared with the mother that did not get along with her mother-in-law what the Lord spoke to him about and she and that baby went into a seizure and she repented before God got things right in her heart and then she got things right with her mother-in-law and the baby began to enter into a seizure and she says, devil, I'm walking in love now. Take your hands off of my child. Immediately the seizure stopped yes. and the child yes. never had another. Amen. Excuse yes. me. The devil tried to attack the child one more time. 
I don't know how long it was between that time. It could have been years or months. But And she said, take your hand off my child. Yeah. Satan, I'm walking in love. And it stopped immediately. Right. Yeah. See, she was ready. But I go, go to show you, there are some things, and I could go another direction here. Uh, if we would have just kept the commandment of love, as Sister Renee was preaching to us earlier about giving our testimony, we wouldn't have faced certain things in our lives. Right. Right. I remember another lady. Another lady had a rare disease. Doctors, medical science didn't know too much about it because of, uh, I think you said it was 30 years. This was 29 or 30 years that she has not talked to her, her brother. And she, was, she needed a healing. She had a rare disease. Medical science didn't know too much about it, Donna. And so, before she went up to get prayed for, she called up to New York State to have her brother to forgive her. And it was 29 to 30 years, same as your case. And he forgave her. She forgave him. After she got off the phone, she noticed that the sickness just left. Now, I'm going to say this before I read the Word of God. People's going to do you wrong. That's right. They're going to say things about you. You're going to, oh, thank you, Lord, that's good. And here's what the Holy Spirit just gave you. You're going to perceive things wrong. Right. That there was nothing ever there to begin with. That's right. But you need to be spiritual enough, whether they did or whether you perceived it, that you need to forgive. Because if you don't forgive, you're, you're not hindering. Uh, I'm going to use me as an example. If somebody's got something against me, they're not hindering me. Right. They're hindering themselves. That's right. If I've got something against you, I'm not hindering me. Excuse me. I'm not hindering you. I'm hindering me if I've got something against Jason. Say Jason over there in the back. Say he did something or what he didn't do to me. And I've got offense against him. Well, I'm not hurting Jason. He's still smiling like he is now and happy. I'm hurting Dennis Stewart. That's, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So you don't hurt the other person even though you think you are. You are hurting yourself and you can, and you can well, thank you, Lord. That's good. Let me tell you what you can do. You can forfeit your salvation. That's right. That's right. By not forgiving. Because if you do not forgive, neither, if you do not forgive, Come on. neither will you be forgiven. That's right. That's scripture. That's right. Amen. 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 Hey, you know, some people, they walk around and say, well, I don't commit adultery. I don't murder. I don't lie, I don't cheat, I don't steal. But if you have unforgiveness in your heart and you refuse to forgive somebody, that's right. Uh, that's worse than all those things. That's right. right. Amen. Sure is. Look with me now at the 34th verse of Matthew chapter 22. And I just can't get away from this. I'm going to share this. Christians are different from the world. Amen, John? We're not perfect. If I've offended anyone in here, I fall down on my knees and ask you to forgive me. Right. Amen. That's right. That's how we all should be. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yes, you're gonna you're gonna be offended. Yes, you're gonna be hurt. Yes, things are gonna be said. Yes, things are gonna be done, whether directly or indirectly. But that's when we talk. That's when you go to someone and say, hey, look, I was offended. And if you don't go to that person, well, it, it will just fester. That's right. Amen. Now look at verse 34. But when the Pharisees had heard that he had put the Sadducees to silence, Jesus did, the religious people, they were gathered together. Now the Pharisees and the Sadducees, see, they had different beliefs. And I'm not going that right now. But they, so they started gathering together. Why did they start gathering? Because they wanted to come against this man, Jesus. Look at verse 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, and said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. 
And the second is like unto it. And Jesus Christ. Now see, what I say is unimportant, but what Jesus said is important. Right. And he said here, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, we know to love God. Right. Don't we say Yes, sir. Really, Jim? Right. Yes, sir. We know to love God. But you know how I can see that you love God is by the testimony that you gave me. It's easy to say I love God. But are you loving your neighbor? Right. First John says, how can a man say he loves God and hates his brother whom, whom he sees? Right. You can tell you how I know you love God is when you love your enemy. Right. This is how I know you love God. When somebody does you wrong or lies about you mm. and you still forgive them. Yes. That's, right. That's how I know you love God. Right. Because the love of God is in you. It's easy, it's the easiest thing in the world for you and I to love someone that loves us and treats us good and talks good about us. That's easy. I could do that before I was ever a Christian. That's right. But being a Christian, Jesus said, a new commandment I give unto you, and that's only kept in the spirit. Because you can't love me with your body. You can only love me out of your heart, that's your spirit. Right. So, so Jesus came on the scene and, he, and he, he brought a new commandment and he brought and he's teaching us how to walk in the Spirit. Amen. And so I can love those that love me. And it's sad to say that's the love that we see a lot of in the church. Right. Well, uh, I love him or her because they did this for me. Well, what about if they didn't do that for you? Right. Amen. We're supposed to love one another. It's easy, like I said, it's easy to love, you know, Donna's over here, she's sweet and everything. She treats me good and uh, or sit and, and, and speaks kindly to me. But what about if she didn't? You almost still children. She'll never know the difference in me. That's right. She'll never know. We are see, people should be able to tell the difference in you. That's right. They should be able to look at you and say, you know, they love me and I was just ugly to them. Or I did this to them. And then that's how you please God. Well, we are to love the Lord. Did you know there are some people that I have seen and heard in the past that have hard feelings toward God probably because of what a tragedy happened in their life or, or God, or they didn't get what they were praying for or whatever the case may be, and they started having bad feelings toward God. All right. That's right. That's right. He is to be loved more than any other. That's right. He forgave me. And we're not to question him. Are you hearing me? Yes. As long as you and I live in this world, you're going to always face ugly things. You're going to always face trouble. Yeah, there's going to be times when you and I don't have it, and that's good. But there's going to be times that the devil's going to stick his head up in your life. That's right. right. And you know what wins? Love wins. Amen. That's right. The lady that had the rare disease that, that hasn't <laughs> talked to her brother in 29 to 30 years, kind of like your case with you and your mom, Renee, she was set free. And because of that, the disease left her body. All right. Renee, you were set free. That did something in you. Yes. What happens when we forget? It sets us free. That's right. That's right yeah. It sets you free. That's right. right amen. But when you and I hold all animosity and ill will, we're hanging on to things that we have no business hanging on to. That's right. You know, Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord and your neighbor. But how did he say that all men shall know you're my disciples? Because you have loved one another. And how did he say we will know the true, Sister Pam, from the false? By their fruit. Right. You produce good fruit right. by doing what you did. By their fruit. 
You know, Jesus said, how are you going to know between the false prophets, false teachers, or false, the false, but from the genuine? It's because he said, you shall know them by their fruit. You're going to know the false by their fruit, and you're going to know the Christians by their fruit. What do you mean, Brother Dennis? Fruits of love, fruits of forgiveness, fruits of mercy, fruits of gentleness, fruits of kindness. And then you got fruits of bitterness, fruits of hatred, fruits of gossip, fruits of uh, strife, fruits of division. You have that. And you know, Jesus didn't say, you shall know them by visions. Right. Did he? That's right. He didn't, he didn't say, you shall know them by dreams, did he? Right. He didn't say, you shall know them by their good works. I know of people that only go to church to have good works. That's right. That would give, but that would give you the shirt off their back. And I remember one time I was talking to a man. He come from a good family. They just weren't church. And uh, I got to talking to him about the Lord years ago. I said, won't you get you a Bible and read it? He said, man, my folks would think something's wrong with me. And he had some good, his folks were great. They were good to me. But Jesus didn't say you shall know them by their good works. That's right. He said you shall know them by their fruits. I've had people to come up to me and, and share with me maybe a vision or a dream, but they didn't have no fruit. Right. Jesus, did, Jesus said you know them by their fruit. I mean, how do you know? You know, I've been hanging around with someone, man, that's loving, kind, gentle, you know, mercy. Right. And whether you know this or not, and, or you will know that if, if you don't forgive, it will have effect not only on your spirit. Now listen to me. Because you will be sad. See, unforgiveness uh, zaps the joy out of you. Right. And, and the Bible says a merry heart does good like a medicine. But when you and I don't forgive, man, we are some uh, we are some sad and depressed people. Right. All right. But the moment that you forgive, the joy of the Lord is back. And man, I'm smiling again. I notice that when I sin, when I when I sin before God or someone, the first thing that's gone is my my joy. But the moment that I repent before God or ask somebody to forgive me what I've done or what I've said, man, I'm restored and I'm happy again. That's right. A merry heart does good like a medicine. You know why some people are always in and out of the doctor? It's because they got a heart full of unforgiveness. All right. And if, and if, if we're not careful, that'll turn into hatred. And it, it doesn't matter how many times that you pray for them or lay hands on them, they're not going to get anything until they get their heart right with God. That's right. Yeah. Come on. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's good. Yeah. If your heart ain't right with your brother, your heart isn't right with God. That's Come right. On. Preach. Amen. So it's so imperative that the sermon, the testimony that you gave us, like Mama said, you know, I wish we could have had that on uh, video, but you didn't want it. That that that's being a Christian. You had obstacles and you overcame that. That's right. Yes, there, every one of us in here. You're going. There's somebody's going to offend you. Uh, I could offend you through my preaching, or maybe something that I did and didn't know it or didn't. Or, or something that I didn't do. But you know what? You are required to forgive me. Right. Or come to me. Right. That's right. That's Amen. Right. Because I guarantee you, there's a lot of folks that church members that have hurt me in the past. But you know what? When I say, hey, how you doing? I'm shaking their hand. Why? Because I already made the decision to forgive them. That's right. That's right. Whether they ask me or not. Amen. Right. Because I know it's going to affect me. There's no man that is perfect. No, Somebody says, well, I'm going to go over here to this church. Or I'm going to move from this job to the next job. Or I'm going to marry me another husband or another wife. Well, guess what? Right. You're still there. Right. And the problem Come is on. you. Amen. Not them. Amen. That's right. Because yeah. yeah. the grass isn't always greener on the other side. That's Come on. Right. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Right. <laughs> That's right. Come on now. <laughs> Why? Because it's us. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's here. That's right. You know? You know, uh, so what somebody uh, did me wrong, and if I went to them, or maybe I couldn't go to them, never saw them again, um, if they don't repent, I just have to deal with myself, work out my own salvation. I don't let that in me. See, you are responsible for you. That's right. You are not responsible for me. That's right. I'm responsible for me. That's right. And I don't want to die and leave this world with unforgiveness. See, we you don't hear that preached a lot. You can't go to heaven with unforgiveness, especially hatred in your heart. The Bible says in first John, he that hated his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murder has eternal life abiding in him. That's right. And, you know, we ought to really want to shout because, you know, oh, thank you, Lord, that's good. I preach this because I love you. And I had one gentleman that left this church because I preached forgiveness. He did not want to forgive his sister. And I would preach it, and he would tell me, and, and I would preach it again. Well, why did I preach it? Well, I want him to make heaven. Or you, I didn't say you have to hang around them unless the Holy Ghost tells you to go and uh, visit them and, and uh, speak to them. But uh, you can't go to heaven with unforgiveness in your heart. That's right. That's right. And the man didn't want to forgive his sister. And he didn't want to stay under my preaching. But me preaching the Word of God brings life to a person. This is the only thing that brings life to a person. And you've got some churches that never preach that. Well, you know, there's some people in here, they got they got some unforgiveness uh, against some people, but if I preach that, I might lose them. Well, then you don't love their souls then. That's right. Because if they die in that state, they're not going to make heaven. That's right. That's right. Jesus loves you. Yes, that's right. And the Bible says we know we pass from death unto life because we love God. The brethren. Yeah. Amen. I know I've been born again because there's a love that came in me that was not there previously. Right. Amen. Right. It was a natural human love. And I said all that to you to say this. Forgive. Listen to me. When you don't forgive, you hurt no one but you. That's right. And you destroy the relationship and the fellowship with the Father. Oh. And you were set free what you've done. And thank you for this kind of work. I'm going to I strong. Renee said, I'm going to catch. And see, and you know, Renee, that's so true because many people, they don't realize. And listen, and you're the one that has to deal with it. Amen. That's right. God would tell you and I to do something if we couldn't do it. Come on. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. You're going to leave this earth one day. Amen. You're going to leave it. Make sure your heart's right with your brother. Because when your heart's right with your brother, amen, it'll be right with God. Yeah. That's right. That is if you know Jesus Christ as Lord right. and Savior. Oh, yes. Amen. You got that? Know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. But it, always remember this. This is how you know if you and I are right with God. If we're not right with our brother, then we're not right with God. You know, Brother Dennis, I was praying the other day, and I had some goosebumps while I was praying, and I felt so good, but there's somebody that I'm just not right with. You're deceived. Because you base everything on your goosebumps. <laughs> instead of this. That's right. Amen. Amen. Well, Brother Dennis, you know, I prayed, and uh, I got an answer to prayer, and God answered my prayer. But, you know, there is someone that I really dislike and, and will not forgive how they treated me. You're deceived. That's right. The devil wants you to stay in that state where you're at, where he can win you spiritually. That's, That's right. right. Come on. I've had all kinds of, you know, people, well, you know, we got blessed, you know. Well, we did this and we got blessed, and they were in total disobedience. Well, the Bible tells me he sends the rain on the just and the unjust. That's right. That's right. Did you know God blesses sinners? Yes, He does. That's right. He loved why, brother Dennis, does He bless sinners? Because He loves them. That's right. Amen. Let's all stand.
Glory be to 